All right, so we have big ideas. We're gonna make Strangely in Love. It's better be big. So let's just shoot for the moon. Go and get John Williams. So lucky for me, this film had absolutely no budget. All right, well, okay, we're working with us. All right, all right we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. So I figured, let's go dark. Let's let's make something like Dostoevsky brooding and 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 miserable. <laughs> take one look at this film and it's clear it needs something just hopelessly romantic, something really saccharine and sentimental. But, you know, okay, maybe a piano, keep it small, maybe a fiddle. Or... Now do it funny. <laughs> One of the things that I work really hard to achieve is to create a sense of arc and shape to the overall experience so that it really feels like you've gone somewhere. The arc of the movie starts very old fashioned and in a Chaplinesque uh, old school orchestra sound. It gave me such a wonderful palette to work from where I can start really intimate, you know, just piano and harmonica, something that feels very lonely, something that feels very delicate as we meet Theo. Because it plays in seven chapters, there was an opportunity to uh, introduce a new musical language in each chapter. Amin is very big on when the film makes a left turn, shouldn't the score do that as well? What if we introduce something new, a new color we haven't heard, a new atmosphere, something dark? The alto flute, the accordion, the orchestra itself. What's so awesome about what Austin could do is unify these very different sounds from the waltzy sound of Theo. To the tango of, of Steve. orchestra becomes a more earnest voice and by the end you know the piano comes back at the very end in a very genuine way and what was before this slightly detached almost ironic waltz has quite a lot of soul and it's so simple but it really feels like its simplicity is earned we've made we've built our way there all those colors have come together and there's an element of modern music that somehow, magically, it's all one cohesive universe. They can co all coexist in one movie. Just be bigger with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's amazing we get anything done. <laughs> Most of my scores tend to have some kind of central color or soloist that everything else is built around. And this one was no exception. The thing that was fun here was it was kind of an unusual choice for our Dostoevsky adaptation about a sort of lone, desolate, uh, hopeless man-child. It was actually, I think, originally Amin's idea of what about harmonica, like something very lyrical and romantic. So, of course, not just any harmonica player can do that. And as it turned out, uh, another in our extended family of, of filmmakers and friends knew of this wonderful jazz harmonica player in Amsterdam named Hermine Derlu. And so I actually flew to Amsterdam to work with her personally to record the score. And I've never had an experience like that. It was so amazing. She brought such a personality to the score and she just brought such a magic. She carries it. I mean, she's such a voice. She is Fio. Excellent!
God, that's just so great. What? Would you say something? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> because Theo has such a strong voice, we needed a counterpoint, something very different from that, to stand up and kind of make Theo feel small and insignificant, which is, of course, Steve. And the, at some point, the idea emerged of what about a real aggressive kind of Spanish tango? And there is a guitarist who is world-renowned, absolutely magnificent talent named Scott Tennant, who by good fortune lives here in Los Angeles. So he came in and just tore it to pieces. The guy is a freak of nature. That he, the guitar is like liquid in his hands. We were able to have these wonderful delicate moments that are really sensitive and then moments where it's just this testosterone energy of com complete lack of restraint. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny when you practice this stuff, people kind of leave you alone because they think, oh, he's kind of. That guy needs to be left alone. <laughs> One of the really amazing, unexpected joys to emerge from this film was that it brought two very talented and wonderful people into my life, Laura and Thomas from a band called The Controversy. Laura and Thomas wrote this beautiful song, Simple Love, from the script. Austin is such a collaborative guy. He, he took it and created the score. It's its own score, but somehow it's tied to the, to the song. First time when I saw you, your eyes shining in the moonlight. I knew we were for each other, lonely as we both were. It was one of those things that everyone who heard it immediately said this is in many ways the soul of this film. We said, all right, where in the movie can we just mention the theme of the song? Where can it come into the score and suggest this sense of ideal love? This was a thing that I thought, my God, most people would dream their whole life to write a song like this just once. And I can't believe that I get to play with it and I can reference it in the score and I can actually make it almost like a theme. In fact, the main theme was designed to feel like a sort of brother of their song so that whenever we went from one to the next, it just felt like a single piece of music, a single idea. I think it would be impossible for me to overstate how personally meaningful Strangely in Love is to me. The film is full of cameos of everyone in our, our, our circle of friends, and it represents this perfect time capsule of this period of our lives in a way that kind of immortalizes that chapter. Right as the film began to take shape and be made, uh, Mean's wife, Claire, began uh, what was to become a long fight with cancer. For us, the response was, let's celebrate life. Let's create something with joy and a kind of reckless abandon. And I think the film captures that we, were, we felt lucky to be alive to make a film. It's not just the score to the movie, but it's also the soundtrack of that period of our life. And it reminds me of Claire, um, my wife. So music is timeless and once it's created it can't be undone it's it exists in the world and this theme uh, that Austin wrote will always be my favorite theme